Try, try again with our panel. Rick Davis is with us, of course, Bloomberg Politics contributor, longtime Republican strategist, joined by Democratic strategist Pat Dennis. He's the president of American Bridge 21st Century. Pat, this matter of forgiving student debt has been a sticky one for Joe Biden, and a lot of young people uh, feel like he did simply did not make good on a promise, regardless of his try, try again and the fact that the court, Supreme Court is the one that stopped it. How important will this be as a tool for him in the campaign? It's important. I mean, it's important that voters see you not giving up on delivering on your campaign promises, delivering for voters. You know, you're going to see a ton of complaining from Republicans who are going to sue to try to stop this. They're going to try to, you know, prevent this debt from being forgiven, life-changing amounts of debt in some cases. And, you know, if you show me a powerful Republican who opposes this measure, I'll show you somebody who got a PPP loan um, forgiven, either them themselves or, you know, their biggest mm -hmm. donors. So it seems to me like Never we're not so much arguing well. about, like, whether debt should be forgiven. It should be about uh, whose. Well, Rick, Pat... The words Pat just used there, the idea that you need to be seen not giving up on something, continuing to try, is that what this is really about? Not so much the outcome as the effort if you're a presidential candidate? Or do you need outcomes for when voters go to the polls in November and think, okay, what has he actually done for me? Yeah, I, I think it's a good question. I think politically you want outcomes. You want that money hitting the street before Election Day. None of these funds will actually make their way into uh, no, I say funds, uh, reliefs will make its way into the balance sheet of most of these folks before Election Day. So it's you have to consider it mostly rhetoric. Um, we know that the courts, not Republicans, have had a lot of problems with uh, mission creep by this administration around these kinds of debt relief efforts uh, on the part of the administration. So that's going to play out in the courts, regardless of what the politics of the situation is. And and. Look, I mean, it's kind of a naked grab for youth votes. Uh, you know, they, mm -hmm. and it's not the 18 to 25 year olds. They they're the ones who are generating the debt right now. It's mostly the 30 to 55 year olds who still have been carrying around a lot of this debt for a long time. And I don't think anybody disagrees that student debt burdens uh, uh, are not good for the economy. But it, it's an incredibly unfair uh, approach, which is those people who carried the most debt, not the ones who paid off their loans, not the ones who mm -hmm. couldn't get a loan and didn't go to college and went to maybe community college or didn't go to you know, you know anything other than a high school education. What's in it for them? They're taxpayers too. They're funding this. And so I think, you know, Pat's right. It's it, the issue isn't uh, whether you're doing it, it's who's it go to. And right now it's going to mm. a group of people who, you know, it's just not in the doesn't pass the fairness quotient by American standards. Mm. Well, it's interesting, Pat, uh, when we talk about other people paying for stuff here, because there's a story uh, today by Axios that Joe Biden actually used campaign money. It was DNC cash, one and a half million dollars to pay for lawyers to pay for legal bills in the special counsel's probe to his handling of classified documents. Remembering, he spent a lot of time criticizing Donald Trump for using campaign money to pay for his attorney's fees. And I know we're talking about one and a half million versus in excess of $50 million. But it's these little things. It's partly the reason why people aren't talking about Donald Trump's classified documents case, because Joe Biden got one of his own. Realizing there may not be a moral equivalency here. How tough is this headline? When you see something like this, in, in leaving Joe Biden incapable or maybe not credible in some of his attacks against Donald Trump. Yeah, it's classic whataboutism, right? You do one one thousandth of something that totally makes sense, but kind of rhymes in some way with something egregious <laughs> that Trump did. And all of a sudden, you know, people are jumping uh, down your throat about it. This is the kind of thing where there's absolutely no equivalence between uh, what the DNC did hear some like, you know, routine legal bills. You know, I, I run a super PAC. I wish I could get legal bills down to a million and a half sometimes. But, uh, you know, and what Trump has done, which is frequently deceive his donors, um, you know, folks who thought they were giving to win elections or folks who thought they were, you know, giving based on big lie rhetoric. And he just took that money and put it in his own pocket for his own personal legal bills. There's no equivalence here. 
Well, Pat, it, it all speaks to this idea that there is legal trouble surrounding the former president as he is campaigning against Biden in the general election. And really, it's going to come to the forefront of attention on Monday when his trial, the first ever criminal trial of a former president, begins in New York. It could last six to eight weeks, but realistically, we're talking before the convention here. This could be wrapped up, and he could, there is a chance, he ends up a convicted felon. What would change for the Biden campaign at that point if he's convicted or if he's not? Yeah, and it's important people don't forget, like Michael Cohen went to jail over this exact thing, not something similar, this exact issue. Uh, it's really serious for him. And look, Republicans will do everything they can to cover up for him, to act like this is no big deal, to act like this is some kind of partisan witch hunt. But this is the legal system. This is the legal system that sent Michael Cohen to jail when he was Trump's enemy at the time. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's a big deal. I'm not going to talk about the who's up, who's down of uh, a major candidate uh, being found guilty of felonies. I think we can all agree um, that that's not good. But ultimately, like Republicans are going to have to decide exactly how far down this doom loop they're going to follow him. Well, that's right. Rick, I'd love to hear you weigh in on this. Joe Biden having the DNC pay for his attorneys. Does that not sound like Donald Trump? I, you can talk about equivalency, but perception's reality. Well, I mean, this is all self-inflicted pain. I mean, the, the campaign's finance chairman goes out and says, we don't spend money on legal bills. Then the DNC in their filings shows clearly that they spent money over a million bucks for Bob Bauer, who was representing the president in his uh, you know, documents case. Uh, you know, so that's exactly what they did. And if they just kept their mouth shut and didn't make a big deal of it, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But don't, you know, don't cast stones into that glass house if yours is still pretty thin itself. Um, look, I mean, I think the issue of those documents cases with the uh, with the sensitive and confidential information that Trump had and, and Biden had were handled differently by each individual. And I think, you know, the president handled his more responsibly. But then don't go lying about um, you know whether or not you spent DNC money on it because you did and 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 just come clean. It, that's what American voters want. They want someone who they they don't really care whether you use the, the the money at the DNC for this. What they care about is you 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 weren't really straight with them about it. And I think that could be a breakaway moment for this campaign. You know Biden. You know because there's no chance that Donald Trump's ever going to be straight with anything or. Or apologize, and 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 Biden does have the opportunity to be running a campaign that actually is more transparent and honest with the press and with the voters. So, Rick, essentially, what you're saying is, while sometimes the former president can say things that are outright untruthful, and either people believe him or decide that it's just Trump being Trump, that Biden is not held to that same standard, or rather, Trump is not being held to the same standard Biden is. Yeah, I just don't think there's an expectation that you're ever going to get a truthful statement out of Trump. So he kind of gets a pass, right? Go lie all day long and the press doesn't even report it. You know, but Biden holds himself out as being the truth teller, right? And that's a very good place to be in this election, I think. You know, you want to own that ground. You want to be the fact-based campaign. So you just got to be a little more careful with how you then represent yourself when things like this happen. It would have been absolutely fine for the Biden campaign to say, yeah, we probably should have told the press that, you know, we were using, you know, over a million bucks to pay for our bills. I don't think anybody would have cared at that stage. And it would have drawn a contrast to, you know, the, the kind of transparency that the Trump campaign's given their donors versus those that are being given by the DNC. I guarantee you the DNC donors were happy to do that. It wasn't an egregious amount, uh, but, you know, they never gave them a chance because they, they really didn't, you know, come straight with them. All right, Rick Davis, Republican strategist, and Pat Davis, uh, Pat Dennis, our Democratic strategist, joining us today from American Bridge. Thank you so much. And it's worth pointing out as well, Joe, as we talk about this.